Hi, I'm Kathleen. I'm a naturalist and I'd like to invite you to join me on a virtual hike where I do some nature interpretation, point out different animals, their behaviors. If that sounds appealing, join me. So I'm checking out a couple of raccoons. They're in the fork of that tree that I'm focused on. And I guess this is where they are settling in for their daytime nap, since they're nocturnal animals. Let's see if I can get a little closer without disturbing them because the trail heads up that way. So I see a total of four raccoons in three different trees. And one of them is in a particularly skinny tree. It seems to me, it feels like they have had to uh, escape danger. So they just scattered and went up the tree. Could be the coyote that I saw out here a couple days ago. Um, anyway, very interesting. But there's the sighting for you. Four raccoons on this early morning. So where the raccoons are up the tree, that's where I saw that flock of deer and not sure how well that showed up. Not sure how well it showed up, but it was the coyote. The coyote's in this vicinity. So the raccoons are up the tree and the deer all fled. I'm not sure that I'll cross paths with them again. But when you see raccoons in sort of a precarious position, just in a skinny little tree that doesn't look comfortable enough to sleep in, that can be kind of a signal. It did so in a hurry. Anyway, the coyote's looking for some breakfast. So we just had a chance to see that scenario with the, um, the raccoons up the tree, the deer fleeing, and then uh, you might have seen a little bit of footage of the coyote tracking the deer. So this is the time of year when animals are looking after their young. And that coyote is likely one that I showed you tracks of um, going back a month or two where it was traveling with another coyote. So it's very likely that's the male that we saw. And then the female is in a den with the pups. So he's got a lot on his plate. He's got to do the hunting for the whole family. So he doesn't have her helping at this point because she has to bed down while the young are nursing. Um, so anyway, um, he had his sights on big game today. I don't know how that all worked out, but I just uh, I saw another deer by itself. So it might have been through the um, scattering effect that maybe there was a, a deer from that first collection of deer that scattered or ran away. But it's interesting to see their behavior. First thing that sort of tipped me off is seeing raccoons in the tree, because usually they're very discreet. If they can, they'll rest in a cavity inside a tree trunk. 
but uh, and I've seen them where they've just been uh, on branches or in forks of trees but they're usually secure locations and one of the ones that I saw and pointed out to you today was just in a very skinny tree just it so it looked like it was haphazardly done so it could climb up so it could climb up and out of the way of uh, the hungry coyote so spring is in the air there's lots of expectations on animals that are parents in order to make sure they're feeding their family. Just want to give you a chance to hear what is typically called the dawn chorus with bird song being heard in the morning and it's the whole collection of them. I think we have some frogs that are chiming in on the dawn chorus. You see the sun hasn't even lifted over the horizon. Just wanted to give you a listen to the frogs. Things are coming alive. They're coming back to their um, They're coming back to the activity that takes place in the spring and summer. Wood duck. Not sure how well that picked up on the mic. They're very skittish birds. Later on in the video, you'll be able to see some wood ducks. Wood ducks are unusual in that they nest in cavities in trees. There are some other duck species that do that, but uh, wood duck got its name because it actually is uh, found in the woodland, very close to the water though. So that means the young have to, upon hatching, climb out of the trunk of the tree. And uh, you sometimes will see wood duck boxes in marshes. On the inside of those wood duck boxes, the builder, knowing that the target animal is a wood duck, has to create some sort of stairs in order to, let, to, to help them to, uh, to get out of the wood duck box when it's time for them to leave. The other Canon camera uh, set up on some deer that are on the ridge. I just use the same tactic time and time again. I look for a break in the pattern and that's how I often find animals. And that was one of the things that I had mentioned in the video called How to Spot Wildlife. So the deer that are out here are walking along the ridge. So they stand out in stark co contrast to the sky color behind them. So, a lot of things are active today. It's been an exciting morning out in the woods. Glad you're along with me.
There's some bird song in the background. We've heard about this bird before. It's the red-winged blackbird. Now, I wanted to point out bird song and its prevalence in the springtime. Oftentimes, people might think that they're doing it to express their happiness if there's good weather or because the temperatures are getting warmer or the daylight is getting longer, when in fact it serves a very specific purpose and it has to do with the breeding season. This is the breeding season for birds and uh, for many birds and we are listening to two competing red-winged blackbirds like these are answering each other. I'll give you a chance to hear that. So you get two singing one almost right after the other. And the reason for that is these two are both males and it's almost always the male bird that does the singing. And they're letting each other know, hey neighbor, hey neighbor, and they have their own territory. There's some sort of an invisible line that's their territorial boundary. So what the birds are doing is they're advertising to other members of the same species that that territory is spoken for, it's theirs. But just before that happens, there's another purpose to their singing. And you may remember from an earlier video where a woodpecker was drumming up a storm and it wasn't necessarily to peck out food from the wood or to drill a hole. I'd mentioned it was to say, hey ladies, listen to me, I'm a good drummer. These birds are doing very much the same thing. They're trying to attract females prior to the territorial part uh, where they've already set up a boundary. They're trying to attract a female and that is where good singers get lucky. And so it just so happens. Uh, you kind of notice maybe that in August, most or all singing of songbirds ceases because their breeding season is over. They've had maybe one or two clutches of eggs and then it's time for them to sort of prepare for uh, maybe they have to migrate or just to uh, allow the young to grow and, and finish out the season so they're in good shape before the winter. So that is why birds sing. And belted kingfishers are pretty busy this morning. Lots of chatter going on. Yeah, so I had a missed opportunity this morning. I was thinking to myself, geez, I haven't seen a beaver for probably, I don't know, three months and sure enough this morning mid-march I got to see a beaver as I was pulling out my camera what they do is they scoot under the water and then they don't come up so you kind of lose track of them all together beavers are really hard to find um, this was at 8 30 a.m. as much as they're nocturnal uh, they don't go to bed right away as soon as the sun comes up but they end up uh, yeah, so they end up uh, just sort of uh, sort of hanging out in the water for probably uh, an hour or two after dawn. And likewise, uh, at dusk, they'd come out a little bit earlier than just dusk. Um, beavers are very hard to find in the water because they have such a low profile. So oftentimes, the easiest way to find a beaver is when it's on land, because then you see this lump of <laughs> brown fur 
and uh, and that's how I've seen uh, a few of the beavers that I've found this year. But in this case here, this one was in the water. I was very close to it, so I got to see its head and the fact that you don't see a tail profile, like because uh, its tail's flat. Unlike a muskrat, muskrats are much smaller, and they have a tail that has sort of an undulating pattern that follows them. Thanks again for joining me today on Hiking with Kathleen. It's your comments that really make it very interesting for me. Once I finish uh, reading through them, I tell you, it really fills my soul. So uh, whatever it is that you think that you have been enjoying, feel free to share those comments. Also, if you enjoyed this video, give it a like. If you wanna see more, consider subscribing and that way you'll know when the next ones are available for download every Tuesday morning. Take care. Bye for now. See ya. Hiking with Kathleen.